Well, tensions between Australia and China have affected many countries, with those in the Indo-Pacific region struggling to deal with the possible ramifications. The nuclear submarine deal between Australia, the UK and the US has been controversial, of course, and with China now sourcing the majority of its coal from Indonesia instead of Australia, the country finds itself in the middle of its two allies. For more, let's bring in Dr. Sharon Davies, Associate Professor in Indonesian Studies at Monash University. Welcome back. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for having me back. So tell us a bit about what is taking place uh, in the region at the moment, particularly from an Indonesian perspective. I mentioned some of the details there in the introduction. It's, it's a complex situation, it feels like at the moment. It's an incredibly complex situation. And I think what in Australia we often forget about is that Australia needs Indonesia more than Indonesia needs Australia. Mm. And so when uh, Scott Morrison announced the AUKUS deal, which is uh, this uh, security pact with Australia, the UK and the US, and didn't give any kind of heads up to Jokowi um, about that. Australia is forgetting that it really needs to be at the very least, you know, polite and collegial to our largest neighbour. And so disregarding them in this new pact uh, is not a good position for Australia to be in. And it's not going to do us any favours in our future collaborations and, and work with Indonesia. So can you tell me more about why Australia needs Indonesia so much in the way that you described it there? <laughs> well, for a start, we have, I don't know, in Australia, 25 million people. Indonesia has 270 million. Uh, and so when we're looking at any kind of thing that Australia wants to do, we really need our, you know, our, our neighbour and our partner uh, to be on site in anything we, we're going to do. And what this AUKUS deal has done for Indonesia is in many ways given them an upper hand. Indonesia is in a particularly interesting place at the moment, both strategically, geographically and, and politically. It has on the one hand this new AUKUS deal with Australia, the US and the UK, and on the other it has China. And now with AUKUS and China, you know, firing things up in the South China Seas, Indonesia could easily just look more favourably towards China than it looks uh, to Australia. And if Australia is not doing that diplomatic work, um, then for what reason would Indonesia look to us as opposed to looking to China? So do we know, has Indonesia publicly stated anything in terms of the way Australia has dealt with the relationship over recent times? Do we know how they're feeling? It has. So Scott Morrison was meant to stop by Jakarta on his way back uh, to Australia and meet President Joko Widodo. But the Indonesian president cancelled that. He you know, left Jakarta and went visiting in the regions and said that he was not available to meet with uh, Scott Morrison. And that was precisely because he felt um, um, insulted, really, that Australia would announce this deal without giving any kind of heads up. Uh, so it has really you know, soured those relationships again at a time where Australia should be doing much more uh, to show respect, politeness and collegiality with Indonesia. Of course, you talk about Australia and China and this relationship and when it comes to the coal um, conversation as well, China's currently experiencing a bit of a coal shortage, a bit reluctant to go to Australia and ask for more. So where, does Indonesia have a part to play? Where does Indonesia fall when it comes to the, the coal conversation, I suppose? Yeah, so again, this is where it is really beneficial for uh, Indonesia to be able to have two players here to look towards, you know, either Australia uh, or China. And as you say, Indonesia is looking towards China now to get a lot of its natural resources and it has options. Uh, and so if Australia wants to ensure its regional security, in, ensure its uh, trade relations and uh, future prosperity, it really needs to be doing more work um, to align itself with Indonesia. Otherwise, uh, Indonesia will go to China for, you know, its coal as it is doing now. And in terms of other things, you know, as educational providers, uh, Australia has long welcomed Indonesian students here for that. But again, if people in Indonesia are looking at job prospects, 
um, and where they're going to make their money when they graduate. And if they see those opportunities in China and if China is welcoming uh, those students and offering incentives, then students are going to start moving uh, towards, uh, towards China. So there's a real shift in geopolitics at the moment. We can see what's happening in the US. Um, the UK has moved away from Europe. Uh, and so students are going to be quite savvy in terms of thinking about their future and where they should be going uh, for their education. And Australia is doing itself no favours. We have very few students studying Indonesian, for instance. So, so where is the Department of Defence, the uh, DFAT, going to recruit those people it needs uh, for diplomatic and trade work in Indonesia? So, you know, there's, there's a lot more Australia could be doing on this front. So a lot of uncertainty as you're touching on there. Just briefly to finish, what should we be watching now in terms of this story between Australia and Indonesia over the coming months to see if it improves? Will there be talks? What, what will you be watching? Um, to see if Australia actually makes any, you know, kind of moves towards recognising what our neighbours, not just in Indonesia, but in the whole ASEAN um, uh, region, a feeling because AUKUS is, you know, a coming together of Australia, the US and the UK, you know, to, to you know, almost effectively arm itself better against China. And in between that, we have a whole lot of Asian countries who are wondering, you know, what's going to happen in terms of their future. If there is going to be increased military activity on their doorstep, then how how is that going to impact them? So what I'm interested in looking at is how Australia can reach out to its friends and allies in the wider Asia region and reassure them and you know, do the, the groundwork that is needed to ensure that we have strong relationships with, with all of the countries uh, in Asia, that we're not just looking, you know, to those old friends, the US and the, the UK, but we're really trying to strengthen our networks in the Asian region. Dr. Sharon Davies, thank you so much for your time and your insight again today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.